How you doing? I'm Big D. Welcome to my show. String them up with Big D. So today I'm going to talk to you about a couple of different situations. First I'm going to go with giving you a little detail if you're interested. You can own Quiet Riot's drummer Frankie Benali's 1970 Gretsch drum kit. Now this is a uh, as of today. If you're into drums, you gotta have that set. This is let me give you the what it includes. The drum set includes the Gretsch 14 by 10 marching snare, two floor toms. A 16 by 16 and a 16 by 18, a 10 by 14 rack tom, a 14 by 26 bass tom. The whole lot also comes with Benelli's signed Quiet Riot bass drum head and a certificate of authenticity from Frankie's wife, Regina Benelli. If you're a Quiet Riot fan and you are a drummer, this sounds like an incredible deal. An early 1970s brown badge Gretsch drum kit in a burgundy sparkle finish that originally belonged to Quiet Riot's drummer Frankie Benali. It's available for purchase on Reverb. As previously, uh, his funeral service for Frankie was held November 15th at 2.30 p.m. Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Hollywood Hills, Los Angeles, California. The entire event was live streamed to the public. Benelli, who joined Quiet Riot in 1982 and played on its breakthrough album 1983, Metal Health, died on August 20th, uh, August, in August 2020, after a 16 month battle with pancreatic cancer. Frankie was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer, April 17, 2019. Given six, six months to live, he put in, put up an inspiring, brave, and courageous, courageous battle to end and continue playing live as long as he could. Standard chemotherapy stopped working and series of strokes made the continuation on a clinical trial impossible. He ultimately lost his life 7 18 p.m. August 20th, 2020, in Los Angeles, surrounded by his wife and daughter. If you're a heavy metal fan, you know who he is. Quiet Riot was definitely a part of the 80s when it comes to metal. This is also reported today. Ozzy Osbourne's European tour with Judas Priest postponed till 2023. Now, that's a long time away. Are they waiting for the pandemic to blow over? I'm not sure. Ozzy Osbourne previously announced European tour with guest Judas Priest, originally set for 2019 and then rescheduled three times, has once again been postponed. All tickets remain valid and will be honored for the new dates in May and June 2023. Ozzy says, due to the ongoing uncertainty with full capacity events and travel logistics in much of Europe, we have come to the difficult decision to postpone the 2022 tour to 2023. Originally, the tickets remain valid for the new dates. And he says, I want to thank all of you and Judas Priest for your continued patience and support. Well, for Ozzy's health issues have come out in past reports. I want to say that uh, it sounds like he's doing well. Um... Initially, the, the scrap 
his entire 2019 schedule as he recovered from surgery to repair an injured sustain while dealing with a bout of pneumonia. The tour was postponed a second time after Ozzy continued to deal with his health, health issues following a fall in his Los Angeles home. That fall aggravated years of injuries from an ATV accident that occurred in 2003. The tour was pushed back a third time in October 2020 due to coronavirus pandemic. Ozzy's European tour with Judas Priest tour will now take place more than four years later than originally planned and almost five years after tickets first went on sale September of 2018. Earlier this year, it was revealed that Ozzy was due to undergo a major surgery to help correct his neck and spine issue following the 2019 fall. Those injuries have continued to keep the legendary heavy metal singer from returning to the stage. Less than a year after Ozzy fall, Ozzy's fall, the family revealed publicly that the Black Sabbath frontman had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. In July 2020, Ozzy said that he was still not back to 100% after suffering suffering from several medical issues last year, including the fall, neck surgery, hospitalization for the flu. Ozzy also said that he was looking forward to performing again once he regained his health and coronavirus pandemic has sustained, subsided. In May 2020, Ozzy's son Jack said that his father will probably retire within the next five to 10 years. <laughs> but Ozzy, who will turn 73 in December, has repeatedly said that he is not calling it quits, despite the fact that his No More Tours 2, whenever it ends up happening, is being billed as his last major global track. Do you believe it? Come on. Ozzy's gonna outlive everybody. Ozzy was also forced to cancel April 2020 trip to Switzerland to see a doctor who specialized in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Well, let's hope that uh, Ozzy stays healthy, the pandemic goes away, and this tour happens. Speaking of Judas Priest, announced the uh, announces their Screaming for Vengeance graphic novel. Z2 Comics has announced that Judas Priest will team up with rapidly growing entertainment band for an original graphic novel to be released in 2022 in time for the anniversary of the British heavy metal legends highest selling album the undisputed classic screaming for vengeance teaming with writer Rains Housley comic book tattoo the heroine diaries and Neil Glead Saber the artist Christopher Mitten, Hellboy, and the PBRD. Judas Priest bestows upon his generations of fans the band's first ever graphic novel. 500 years from now, a ring of cities orbit high above the surface of a dead world, controlled by a ruling elite that maintains power through manipulation and brutality. When a naive engineer inadvertently threatens the status quo with the virtual scientific discovery of Bloodstone, he is betrayed by those he trusted and cast out to the broken planet below. In the wreckage and des desolate of a broken world where every day is a battle for survival, he must choose between accepting his new life in ex exile or screaming for vengeance.
Judas Priest Screaming for Vengeance will be released in a both soft cover and hard cover formats in finer bookstores, comic shops, and record stores everywhere in 2022 July. With special limited deluxe and super deluxe versions featuring an exclusive anniversary vinyl LP prints and more available to pre-order now exclusively through the Z2 website. Now, if you're a White Snake fan, you're going to want to hear this. There's a lot of bands out there, a lot of older bands, especially metal. For whatever reason, if they were to replace a guitarist or a singer or whatever, a bassist, usually you don't see them when it's an all man or boy band. <laughs> Some of them are boys. Then uh, you don't see them replaced with a female. But let's talk about this. White Snake. They're replacing their bass with Tanya O'Callaghan. Yes, she is beautiful. Probably a good reason why they've replaced their bassist with a female. Definitely, men are going to want to go and check it out while they're listening to some cool tunes. So, Whitesnake announced addition of the bassist, Tanya O'Callaghan. To the group's ranks, Tanya joins David Coverdale. Fronted outfit as the replacement for longtime bassist Michael Dabb, who departed. His departure was revealed over the weekend. Hmm. Coverdale said in a statement, Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are very proud to announce and to introduce you to all to our newest snake, or should I say snakeette. Please give a loud white snake welcome to the Irish tornado whirling dervish, dervish of a performer whom we feel will bring a fresh, new excitement musically and welcome energy to the band. Both in the studio and on stage, here she is, Irish born and bred, the one and the only, Tanya O'Callaghan. Yeah, this is going to be something to see. I can't wait to see uh, what they come out with an album. Let's see if they say anything. Let's uh, let's go here. Uh, for whatever reason, White Snake has never fe featured a female musician in the band before. Bad boys, but how, like I, like I said, how many do? But when we when we saw Tanya performing with our friend Stephen Adler, his band at the M3 Festival in 2019, we were all blown away. An electrifying performer. When White Snake and Michael Davin, Devin, sorry, my my apologies, decided to go their separate ways, Tanya was the first person we reached out to. And thankfully, she accepted our invitation to become a snake. We are thrilled and delighted to welcome Tanya to White Snake. Let the music do the talking. Well, Callahan commented on her addition to the White Snake in a social media post. She wrote, I guess the snake's out of the bag. What an absolute honor to be joining White Snake Coverdale for the World Farewell Tour 2022 and 2023. This small town girl still pinches herself over the amount of legends I've had to joy to had the joy to work with. Tour and record or record <laughs> with over the past few years since I've made the terrifying solo leap across the Pacific with no clue how everything would work out and unfold. It's been a wild ride and just thought I couldn't get any better. Who calls only feckin' <laughs> white snake? 
And the best part, to step into the snake shoes of my base brother, Rudy Sarzo. Tony Franklin, Neil Murray, and Michael Devin. Are you kidding me? What a fucking honor. Beyond belief. My heart is exploding. Coverdale, who turned 70 in September, recently confirmed that he plans to retire from touring at the White Snake's next batch of concerts around the world. These guys are incredible. 70 years old and still touring. Amazing. Props to anybody that is still working, let alone going on the road. That's incredible. Although Coverdale will no longer perform a White Snake, he is still planning on writing and recording fresh material once he has retired from the road. Earlier last year, White Snake was forced to cancel its U.S. tour with Sammy Hagar and the Circle and Night Rangers so, the, so that Coverdale could undergo surgery for bilateral inguinal hernia. <laughs> I apologize. That's, uh, that's a good one. Eventually, all the shows were canceled due to the coronavirus pandemic. Coverdale had both his knees replaced with titanium in 2017 after suffering from degenerative arthritis. He later explained that he was in so much pain with arthritis in his knees that it hampered his ability to perform live. And he's still a rebel in getting out there and doing it anyways, wasn't he? Like Snake, I have been touring in support of its latest album, Flesh and Blood, which has released in May 19, uh, 2019. Wow. Incredible. I'm just going to say this. If you get a chance, please go check her out. She's not only beautiful, she's an amazing performer. Just check it out. You won't be not satisfied, let me tell you that. I want to offer my condolences to former Van Halen bassist Michael Anthony. He mourns the loss of his infant grandson. I can't even imagine going through death of someone like a child or a grandson, a grandchild, etc. It is loss is terrible in itself. But when you have to deal with a child, it's it's just uh, something that should never happen. I know it's part of life, but my condolences are are in order for the former Van Halen bassist Michael Anthony on the death of his death of his infant grandson Rex. The boy was born two weeks ago with a fatal heart problem. Let's see. This was reported uh, way back in 2017. I did not know this. And that's the only reason I'm bringing it up. So I thought maybe you didn't know. But that was, it was reported April 19, 2017. I wanted to at least give my condolences. It is a uh, Something that no one should have to deal with, and obviously it is part of life. So I want to thank every one of you for stopping in. I know it's it's a new show. Maybe you're trying to get the feel of it, see if it's what you want, what you want to be checking into every once in a while. Um, I just want to say I appreciate each and every one of you. Every click that someone views this makes me happy. I don't need millions of views, but I am trying to get out some information that I didn't know was out there. Now that I know this is out there and people are helping me out, they're sending me some links and they wanted me to share this with you because I have another show and I decided to start this show. Maybe I could get some information out. So again, thank you for all of my support. Thank you for helping me out with 
with different stories. And uh, I want to say thank you for the subscribers of other channels along with this one. And this one will be a little bit to grow, but uh, I'm hopeful that it will. Try to have a great rest of your day. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Please be safe, especially if you're going to put yourself on the line for Black Friday. From what I hear, it's a lot of fun for certain people. It is not for me. <laughs> Happy holidays. God bless America.